Well, Barack Obama is not a sort of uh, traitor or he hates America or anything like that. He subscribes to an ideology that sees America as the rogue nation in the world. Uh, what is this ideology? It's kind of a third world anti-Americanism, anti-colonialism. The basic idea here is that the whole ship of the world has gone wrong side up. And it's gone wrong side up for 500 years because one civilization, Europe, America, has conquered the rest of the world and, and stolen its stuff. That's the theory, that these rich countries only became rich by taking the wealth of the poor country. Okay. So Obama it has a global vision, and that is, I want to set the ship of the world right. And what that means is that America has to go down so the rest of the world can come up. The night, uh, he, the night he was elected, he said something along the lines that if, because of what we've done today, we, are going, we have begun to change America and fix the world. Remaking America, that was right. his phrase. And as I listened to that, I thought to myself, how do you remake America without unmaking America? Right. So it's it not rebuild. It was remade. Right. You got to take down the America that there is to put something new in its place. So now, weirdly, I think from Obama's point of view, he's doing what's good for America. It's almost like he's the coach of the Lakers, and he thinks it's really bad for the Lakers to keep winning. Why? Because it's making them arrogant, it's making them uh, greedy and selfish and exploitative. It would be really good for the Lakers to start losing. So he's calling plays for the Lakers to lose. Now, if we're the Lakers, we'd want to fire this guy, right? But first we have to know that that's his agenda. And the, the genius of Obama is that he can do exactly what he wants, but explain it in terms that throw us off his path. You put in the film um, that, uh, um, because, you know, it, you, you use the Lakers analogy here. Um, no, I don't have to know that that's agenda. If, if I'm a Lakers fan and the guy keeps losing, uh, do you have to know his agenda to want him fired? No, you don't have to. But, but people don't generally, I mean, 40% approval rating is astounding with this kind of record. He's defying gravity. Right. You have in the movie this amazing fact that Obama figured it out while he was in college, that he was, that people would want to help him if he put a mask on, right? Yep. Obama possesses in his pocket what can be called certificates of racial absolution. Now, I don't mean by this simply the fact that he's black, he's African American. That's not the key to it. The key to it is that he's a different kind of African American. He's not Jesse Jackson. He's not Al Sharpton. We're used to black leaders who make racial demands. You're a racist un unless you pay me. And that has put America in a very defensive position. Here comes Obama and he never brings the subject up. He's above it. He's the racial healer. So the point to make he's here... he's not. No, he's not. But, <clears throat> but the fact that he doesn't intimidate you with explicit racial appeals is immensely uh, relieving to whites because whites go, oh, wow, he allows us to believe that we've gotten beyond all that by voting for him. See, I, I wondered to myself, why are all these guys like Chris Matthews? <laughs> Chris Matthews is a hardcore guy. I mean, he grew up with Tip O'Neill. He's, you know, he's in the docks of Boston. He's a tough guy. But when he talks about Obama, oh, he's got a tingle he says, oh, I got a tingle down my leg. He, he begins to talk uh, in, a, in a very effeminate way. Now, why? <laughs> it's, again, it, I think it's nothing to do with Obama. It's, Chippo, it's uh, Chris Matthews able to say that by my supporting Obama, I'm patting myself on the back. I'm a morally wonderful human being mm -hmm. because I can vote for this guy. So this is Obama's secret weapon. He disarms us uh, and he, he uh, brings out from the left this uh, sycophantic dedication that is unprecedented. You have a point in the, um, uh, in the documentary about the caliphate, the United States of, um, of, of Islam. Uh, of Islam. Uh, I, there was a few times I knew I was on the right track when I had you on, uh, when I talked about the caliphate, um, when I said the Muslim Brotherhood was just absolutely evil and infiltrated the United States, um, when I talked about... Um, 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 social justice being evil and get out of your church if it's a social justice church if be very careful of that term find out exactly what that means um, the gates of hell opened up on me 
and the caliphate was the last one that just the gates of hell opened up and look at what's happening now yeah i think obama wants to um reduce america's footprint in the in the world because he thinks we're stepping on the world so what he's doing is encouraging uh anti-american forces in the middle east um he used force to push out Gaddafi in Libya, uh, and he used diplomacy to push out Mubarak in Egypt. Now, what did those two guys have in common? They were both doing business with the United States. Gaddafi is no friend of ours, but he was behaving himself since mm -hmm. uh, 2002. Uh, Mubarak was probably our greatest ally in the region, not counting Israel. Meanwhile, Obama refuses to use force when there's massive um, casualties Iran. in Syria. Didn't even bring up Iran. There were, Iran, you had bigger demonstrations than Tahrir Square. Yeah. Yeah. And Obama says, no, oh no, not only did he not intervene, he told the rest of us to be quiet, let's yeah. be calm. And all of that died off. So what do Syria and Iran have in common? They're deadly enemies of the United States and they are allied with each other. So the only consistent explanation for Obama's double standard in using force over here, but not over there, pushing this guy out, keeping that guy in. The, the name of the, um, the documentary is uh, 2016, which implies you can see down the road to what it's going to be like in 2016. Stop at Israel. What does Israel look like in 2016? If I were an anti-colonialist, I would say that it is not enough to have a Palestinian state. It's not enough to give the West Bank and Gaza back. Why? Because the anti-colonial view is that Israel itself is the little colonial power, the little American surrogate sitting and occupying Muslim land. It's a cancer. So if I was an anti-colonialist, I would think, what is a clever way to get rid of Israel? to return the whole of Israel to the Muslims. Now, I think, I, I would know that Jews aren't going anywhere, but I would think of ways like, what if I were to support a right of return for Palestinian refugees? What if I were to make it so that Muslims would be the majority in Israel? Mm -hmm. Then the Jews would be a minority in their own country, mm -hmm. and it would cease to be a Jewish country. And I could achieve that result by demanding democracy. Everyone has an equal vote. Mm. Just as if I wanted anti-colonialism in the Middle East, I would demand that Saudi Arabia have a free election. I'd say, royal family, we've seen it now in Egypt. You put yourself on the ballot. You run against the Muslim Brotherhood, and let's see who wins that election. So we look at the Middle East. There are three important countries. There is Iran, there's Egypt, there's Saudi Arabia. Iran has been in the hands of the radical Muslims since 79. Egypt is in the process of transporting itself into the hands of the Muslim Brotherhood. Who's left? Saudi Arabia. So if the radical Muslims get that one, they have Mecca, they have Medina. If I'm not mistaken, over in the, the Middle point. East, 2000, uh, 2011 was known as the year of the dictators, and 2012-13 is known as the year of the kings. Meaning, first we took care of the dictators, next come the kings, which would, which would make you right. Um, one more quick thing. You have um, a piece where um, you show Barack Obama sitting with, um, uh, what's his name in Russia, and, and he leans... Medvedev. Uh, yeah, Medvedev. The Russian and he, president. And he leans over and he says, listen, I, I, I need some more room here. I'll have more room to maneuver. Chilling, bone chilling. Barack, or, I mean, uh, Medvedev says, I'll transmit the Vladimir. And I stand with you. Yeah, and I stand with you. What does that imply? Well, that implies at the least that he has a hidden agenda. We may not know what that agenda is, but the clear meaning of what Obama is saying is he's saying, look, Medvedev, there are things I want to give you. And he's talking about missile defense in this case. He goes that if I were to tell the American people what those things are, they might not reelect me. So wait, give me space, give me flexibility, his actual words so that I can do these things after I'm reelected. Remember, in the second term, a president is not tethered Doesn't to public care. opinion. He becomes his own man. So weirdly, I think, despite all we've seen about Obama, we haven't seen the full Obama. Do we, <laughs> that's frightening. Do we, um, do we survive 2016 if he's elected? 
Well, I, I think that we do not survive as, I mean, the risk is, will America still be a world superpower? That's question number one. Uh, I, the second is, what about America's wealth? Now, I mentioned in the film, uh, this is directly from the Federal Reserve, American wealth from 2007 to now is down 40%. So that's almost half. If American wealth were to drop another 40% in the next four years, that would be a total decline of American wealth of 66%, not 80%, but 66%. America would cease to be a first world country because this is happening at the That's time amazing. when other countries are dramatically coming up. Brazil, Indonesia, we're helping Chile, yeah. India. So America would essentially drop back into the also ran of nations, okay. which is to say we would be exactly in the position that the world was in 1500 before colonialism. There was no superpower. There were multiple nodes mm, of influence. That was That's was the world I believe that Obama wants. Um, okay, back with questions from the audience in a minute.